हे परी हे परी So this piece will be an exclusive print for my online store. It will be painted on 12 by 18 inches hot pressed Fabriano watercolor paper. The concept is a dragon mistress designed with colorful peacock feathers and hummingbirds. The dragon will also have the same design elements. So right now I am um, laying out basically the outfit that I decided to, or I came up with and um, I'm tracing it on the light table to get a basic shape because the original drawing has got a ton of lines on it. The print, printing paper is quite thin so I don't want to sit there and erase over and over again and then lose all of my sketches. So I'm going to light table it, go in there with a, um, an H pencil and try to get some of the basic shapes in. So it seems like a lot of work and it seems tedious, but I think because it's a refined print, especially watercolors, I don't want too many lines and sketch, I mean sketch lines on the final, final piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and then trace it over again once I've finalized the outfit. You know, um, when people or artists do watercolors, they generally, you, you know, um, use carbon paper or a light table just to transfer their final lines and you'll notice that it's more often than not not completely refined or the detail isn't always there and it's what we do afterwards when we're using the watercolors but I think with this one it's important to make sure I keep as many of the sketch marks off as possible because I want to keep it pretty clean, but then also retaining some of the detail, um, some of the movement, because I, I want this drawing to seem like it was done in Procreate or Photoshop or something, more or less. So there's going to be a lot of tiny details being added in. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this stage up, um, finish designing her outfit, and then tracing it onto the watercolor paper. And then we get to start on the masking in the background. I am refining the layout I light tabled earlier while adding the finalized concept for her peacock inspired wardrobe and detailing the hummingbirds and dragon. At this stage I'm still trying to figure out the composition. The birds will help add to the flowing nature I'm going for. Now that the design sketch is ready I can transfer it onto the final watercolor paper. It remains to be seen if I have transferred too little or too much of the design. I feel like I have just enough to work with. I have applied the frisket film to mask off the foreground. This allows for a crisp outline around the dragon and mistress when I paint this guy in. I'm priming the paper with water to allow for a smooth gradient when I add the first layer of paint for the sky. I also masked the paper onto a wooden drawing board so that I don't mess up my desk and I could turn the board around when I'm painting. Since this is a very colorful piece, I decided on a very soft pink and purple sky with a little bit of orange and soft yellow towards the bottom. It's a lot like the sunsets I saw when I was living in Hawaii. The combination of the type of paper and the pre-washing helps the paint go on smoothly, allowing the blending to be much easier than if the paper was dry. The flat nylon brush I'm using helps cover large areas faster, but not so large that the colors become a huge blur. You can still see some of the brush strokes left behind to indicate clouds, I also use a bright round brush if the blunt edge of the flat brush is too harsh. 
I'm leaving enough time in between each layer to make sure it's dry enough before adding another layer of color. This also allows me to see where I'd want to add more color. Time to peel the mask off of the dragon. This could get a little hairy, so you gotta be really careful with the um, X-Acto knife. I've not tried masking with the Fabrianos yet, so I don't know how how it's gonna be with the paper, but I guess here's my answer. It's not too bad. I know that some of it went through um, the mask, but I'm okay with that because I could make it into a gradient or you know add a little bit of water and then jelly rolls or white wash. It should be fine. Oh, see I missed this part right here. I think I will carve this part out carefully so it doesn't rip through. Okay, so let's go in and actually paint this dragon. I could just fade his tail right here because I already started to do that. I'm just going to have the pink there just so that I have a place so that I have a direction for fading it and I don't like forget about it and I start over rendering the end of the dragon because he's supposed to look like he's coming out of the clouds basically. I'm going to draw some clouds on in the front here as well. Even if the dragon is supposed to be a certain color, I think that it should still reflect the sky in the back. So I'm just adding a little bit of water so that the paper has already been saturated. And then I'm going to go in and uh, start putting in the base tones. And that's kind of the gradient I was going for. Trying to make it look like the peacock spider, which is a brighter orange, but I think I'll wait until later to do that and I think I'm going to have his face be very bright so that it stands out um, because it's going to be very teal and like a, a baby blue for the most part so I want to make sure that the accents are in the right areas. Again I'm just getting um, ideas from the peacock peacock spider. Now I'll include a picture of it in post. The colors aren't going to end up this way but I think it's important to put like an under undertone first or color um, to kind of give me a direction and to separate the larger shapes. On top of the fact that I haven't quite uh, decided on what his exact patterns are going to be yet. I don't want it to look too much like the peacock spider because then, because then it wouldn't look like a dragon. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let this dry for a little bit before I um, keep going. Plus I have to figure out the hair and the, maybe the tongue could be a different color as well. Um, it kind of all depends on the composition or the color and how it's arranged on the piece along with the mistress. So we'll have to figure that part out. So the colors that I'm adding right now are just to indicate what I had in mind because um, I didn't pre-plan it or make a thumbnail so this should help me out and that's kind of how I usually do it. I think for the next piece though I'm going to thumbnail it out and then do a quick thumbnail painting so that I know exactly where I'm going to put my colors. Um, part of the fun of creating a piece is to be able to kind of create as you go and not pre-plan it so some of it's still a surprise but I think um, I'm going to try a different approach next time and pre-plan ahead of time but I do love the process of trying to figure things out while I'm working on it every so often, except I can't do that with comic book pages because there's a lot of people who get involved and I can't just um, know what's going on and not telling my editors or the letterist and the designer and stuff. So it's slightly different with a painting that's for myself, basically. I 
The nice thing about watercolors is how you don't have to be perfect when you're laying the colors down right away. And um, it's kind of white. Watercolors are unique and special. You'd have to be more precise with markers, I think. More often than not, I mean, there's no one way or right way to do it. But I like to play on the strong points for a lot of different mediums. And that's why I use so many different types because it's fun to experiment with these and mix and match and see what you get out of it. It also makes your artwork a little bit more unique. So it's very individual. Sometimes I use my finger if I haven't used it already where it's, it gets the piece dirty, but luckily this time it's not like that. But there are times when I've used like gouache and I'll forget and I'll start smudging with my finger and then causing like a mess. Maybe transparent wings would be kind of cool. I mean, I think it needs to be somewhat transparent anyways. I mean, what watercolors has taught me with uh, creating artists to be more patient. And it's very therapeutic as well. The snow actually stuck from last night, so I went outside to see if I could find any new animal tracks because a few days ago I saw some foxes, maybe, uh, maybe a bear. It was hard to tell, but there's definitely some wildlife out here. The paint actually completely dried from last night, so now it's time for me to go in there and start painting in some of the foreground. I want the focal point to be his jaws and eyes. Adding the texture to his head helps draw attention towards the eye. The dark pupil really helps it pop. As with when I use Copic markers, I tend to be very careful when dealing with skin tones, so I brush on a very light layer to prepare for multiple layers of paint. While the skin base layer is drying, I move on to the peacock feather dress which will have different shades of green. It's also important for me not to overmix colors, especially with such a colorful piece any muddy or dull colors would pop out and make everything seem less cohesive. Since the color scheme so far has been greens, blues, pinks, and purples, I decided to give her dark purple hair. So it's not really breaking the color scheme. Of course, I have to let the base color dry first. Time to add another layer of color to her skin. I actually have a tube of paint that already is pre-mixed. All I have to do is add a little bit of pink, red, or burnt umber to get the shade I need. I try to be very thoughtful when I'm working on skin, making sure that there's just the right amount of water added or paint to certain areas. I also start to outline her with a number two Princeton round brush. I wait for the skin tone to dry just slightly before I start adding another layer of like an orange red to pop out the shadows a little bit more, but I wanted to keep like a warm skin tone so that, um, so that she pops out from the background. I know that you could always um, splotch some of the spots that you don't want if you messed up, but with skin I'd rather not do that because I want that smooth transition to seem natural and not like um, I had to go over it and fix it, 
even though there were some parts where I had to do that, um, it wasn't as noticeable since I spent the time to just uh, let it dry, you know, and um, be very careful and thoughtful about where I place my next layer of color. I was actually very excited to paint the feathers. It starts to feel like the piece comes together once you break out the small brush. After painting for about five days, there's this tendency for me to want to kind of rush through the last part of the process because I spent so much time um, at the beginning that, you know, the exhaustion kind of kicks in. But then, you know, I remember that the whole point of doing it this way is to enjoy the process and to enjoy the journey of creating a piece with watercolors and traditionally. I took a quick break to put together my new art cart. It's not like building a Gundam, but it's still pretty fun. The feathers are now ready for detail. I still have to be very careful of over detailing since they are larger peacock feathers. I'm using a sumi brush to detail the feathers. I love the variation the sumi brushes gives when you're actually um, inking without having to use uh, different brushes like I normally would with the regular brushes. I'm also using a small sumi brush for her eyes and lips. This is the part where I have to be very careful. The piece can easily fall apart if something seems off since her eyes are the focal point, much like the dragon's eyes. I left just enough white of the paper so that I didn't have to use much of the white gel pen to create highlights. Let's make this piece pop. I'm outlining what's left of the piece with the same small sumi brush. I didn't feel as rushed today since I know that today was going to be the last day that I had to work on the details and finally finish the piece. I'm putting the finishing touches on the hummingbirds, making sure they stand out as they help create the flow I intended. After refining the little birdies, it's time to call this piece done.